Could the Chinese government turn on Tesla? Well, a lot of people have said this could happen. A lot of so-called experts have said this could happen. I have avoided saying that until now. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. If you're ever here in Melbourne, Australia, hit me up. Great to have you here on the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else, and thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for supporting my son's channel as well. I'll put a link in the description below to their YouTube channel. Even if you just jump on and subscribe for them, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. They're stoked that so many of you have already done that so far already. Tesla is lobbying the Chinese government to ease truck movement. A recent report from a few days ago says, well, as you know, Tesla's factory in Shanghai has been shut down for a fair while now. Tesla are losing production, massive numbers. But in addition to that, it's not only the lost revenue, the lost production. It's also that they can't expand production at that plant, which I think is probably even more significant because obviously if you can double production numbers, you can double the amount of sales and you stop that from happening, you're slowing that whole process of expanding down. And obviously Tesla makes more money per vehicle from their vehicles manufactured in China. I think that's pretty clear if you look at Tesla's revenue statements, right? Now, Tesla's Giga Shanghai has been unable to get parts to keep its production line running since late last month because of a lack of special passes for truck drivers amid Shanghai's lockdown. And Tesla is very well aware of what's going on here. The Chinese government is very clearly favoring their state-owned business as you would if you're, well, if it was your business and Tesla wasn't your business. They have allowed SAIC to basically stay open and Tesla, well, hasn't been given the same boarding pass to stay open, unfortunately, for them. And you know what Elon's like with this kind of stuff? He's not very patient. I understand. I wouldn't be either. Foreign multinationals, including Tesla and German high-tech plastics firm Covestro, are lobbying China's government to allow more truck drivers to work between Shanghai and other regions as their business is hit hard by the city's COVID-19 curbs. Obviously, Shanghai has been basically shut down for a while now thanks to COVID. Now, the report I'm seeing here in China did not provide more information about who exactly at Tesla is lobbying the Chinese government, but they did cite Richard Fu, a spokesman for Covestro, as saying that logistical constraints remain the biggest challenge, especially with uncertainty about cross-province transportation and supply along the value chain. This has definitely affected Tesla's stock price over the last week, as it's gone down pretty significantly from about $1,200 US dollars when this before this happened to now just under a thousand US dollars. So that's a pretty significant drop. Now Shanghai has been in a phase lockdown since March of 28th. And Tesla Giga Shanghai has been shut down since then, one of the largest sh shutdowns since the plant began production in late 2019. However, SAIC, state-owned, and General Motors, by the way, 50% state-owned, are well still open. Apparently, GM's workers are literally sleeping, living, just doing everything in the factory. Giga Shanghai produces around 6,000 Model 3 and Model Y vehicles every week, according to a Reuters report last week. But I believe that number is actually higher now. That's old data. Shanghai added 1,000 confirmed cases of COVID and 24,000 asymptomatic infections, apparently, on the 10th of April. So a few days back now. And what's happened? Well, as a result, more cities around China are introducing tra travel restrictions, resulting in some highways being closed or drivers entering a city and not being able to return with whatever product they're delivering or picking up, etc. So these kind of strict COVID controls that the Chinese government is implementing and the Chinese media, by the way, are being very diplomatic about this to avoid getting themselves in hot water. I'm not because I don't work for the Chinese government. I don't have anything to do with them. I know a lot of people that watch this channel actually think that I do. They think that um, I somehow, I don't know, maybe I have Chinese ancestry or I have Chinese friends or I don't. Um, I did work with people in Taiwan for a year, but I don't talk to any of them anymore. Um, I really have nothing to gain from saying anything positive about China or anything negative. So I just tell it how I think it is. So when I, when I talk positive about Chinese car companies, I'm just telling you what I think is reality. It's not influenced in any way by being concerned about what the Chinese government will do to me or do to my family, although they did shut down my website when I was in China for a couple of months and I was critical about what they were doing. But anyway, my point here is 
It's dangerous ground what Tesla is on right now. You've got to admit, it's dangerous for them to be doing this, dangerous for them to be sending the message that they want these restrictions removed. Um, do you really question bite the hand that feeds you? Well, that's kind of what they're doing to some degree. And it is something that could put them in hot water. Now, in 2020, 74% of China's business freight was transported by road. And the disruption of truck traffic is causing a huge impact on normal operations, even for a number of different Chinese EV companies, which are not state-owned, Neon, Xpeng. However, not so much on BYD, who aren't in Shanghai, or at least in these areas that are affected heavily by these shutdowns. Well, for the most part, they're not anyway. Now, apparently, Chinese regulators are aware of the problem and actually trying to do something to solve it. On April the 9th, China's Ministry of Transport said that local authorities should do their utmost to ensure efficient and smooth freight logistics and not impose stricter local policies and ensure uniform access to control policy. So it does seem as though maybe Tesla's um, lobbying has had some effect on the government in what could potentially be a positive way. However, well, I'm just, uh, I just think be careful, Tesla. Be careful what you do in China. I learned that. You might have to learn it the hard way. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.